late in conference play. I think BYU is feeling like in a season where they've had so many disappointing results, close losses. I think BYU is feeling like, hey, maybe this team finally is equipped to make a deep run. Well, and, and you know, it, it showed up last night in the second half. They're trailing by 13 to Portland. In the first four minutes of that second half, that 13-point deficit was erased. They came out. They were physical. They rebounded the ball so well at the offensive end. Kick out, three-point shots. Time and time again, the ball movement was crisp. They need to do that for a full 40 today. You can't just do it for 20. So the Lions of LMU win the opening tap. We are underway this first quarterfinal game on a Saturday night in Las Vegas. Shelton got cut off. A little runner, Jalen Anderson, got his own miss. Cam Shelton put up big numbers. He has not put up big numbers against BYU in the two meetings. And part of that is because he wants to shoot threes and get to the cup. And they've done a great job of forcing him into mid-range contested shots. Anderson takes another shot and missed that three. Rebound for the Cougars. Rudy Williams, who's starting. A lot of the year came off the bench for Mark Pope's team. Spencer Johnson, Jackson Robinson's been shooting the ball well. And Foose Traore, one of the best players in this league. And a guy who really, with his physicality, can take over a game. He gets the first points of the night. And he did last night on the offensive glass, the putbacks. Just a warrior out on the court for BYU. Good look for Shelton. Offensive rebound. LMU's big man and with the left hand, Rick Isanza. Isanza did not play in the win for BYU, uh, but he did play in the loss for BYU. His length can cause problems for a BYU team that doesn't have a lot of interior length. It's a huge size advantage for him over Foos. Mark Pope, who is really, I mean, he, you listen to Mark talk about Foos Traore and what he means to this program in the midst of a year where I, th I think overall it has been disappointing for BYU. Chance to salvage that here this weekend. And we'll talk about what Foos has meant to this program, but Coach Pope has done a really good job of managing this team as they've gone through their ups and downs. I mean, the lack of consistency as any coach would tell you, it's frustrating because it's not like you're inconsistent in your messaging or what you're doing at practice. Down the lane and good. The little scoop shot from Quan Marble late in the shot clock. Great job attacking, getting in the paint. Look, this is an LMU team that's really aggressive. Sort of hang their hat on. Playing hard, pushing some tempo when they get a chance. Tough contested <laughs> jumper goes down. So 4-4 here in the early minutes. BYU gets the steal. George out to Williams. Williams gets fouled by Lea Pepe. And that's good on two counts. One is it's a turnover that leads to transition. That's where BYU, their defense, when they can get out and run in transition, they start to find their rhythm and flow at the offensive end. And even more so that Lea Pepe picks up that foul that that's one that I think that you're either going to go straight up and challenge or you let it go to protect yourself so you can stay out on the floor and play aggressive when you need to because Williams was already past him there there's no chance he was going to make a play first two free throws for Rudy Williams we've got a glimpse of Stan Johnson the head coach in his third year what a job he has done he talks about raising the standard and the energy level I mentioned this a couple years ago the energy level that he brought day one to LMU you could sense that there was a commitment and a belief that he had in himself and as soon as his team embraced that and took that on their shoulders they, they would find success and this has been a really good year for LMU Leia Pepe gets fouled by George reaching in the first foul against BYU first two subs for LMU Ideal world when everybody's healthy. One thing that Stan Johnson does like to do is use that bench. Keeps them fresh, allows their legs to stay fresh in that second half, and they try to wear you down as the game goes on. Best in the game, Lamage Lewis, who's been banged up late in the year. Shelton having a hard time finding room against Spencer Johnson, playing good defense in the early minutes. Shot clock winding down. And a near turnover. Shot clock goes off. The ball hit the backboard but never hit the rim. So that is a shot clock violation. A great defense so far by Spencer Johnson. In full denial, no help. 
off of Cam Shelton. I think it's a brilliant move by Mark Pope. If you can take away the head of the dragon, you give yourself a chance. Now a foul, and that's an offensive foul. Triore, an illegal screen. Well, and obviously, you talked about Lea Pepe picking up early fouls. I think the same could be said for BY. They need Triore on the floor as much as possible. They, he's the heartbeat of this team. I mean, with his toughness, his interior ability to rebound offensively and defensively, he's just so strong. Quiet start for Cam Shelton. Found an opening for three. No good. Williams got cut off. Good job being on two, though. And that's that's going to be a big key for them tonight. There's Triore with the left hand and a foul. And all of that started by the dribble into the paint, stopping on two, kicking it out. Everybody's scrambling. You have guys mismatched. And so you have the advantage, a great pin and seal. One of the things Foose does, he pushes up the line, gives a target hand, and allows you to throw it to the corner, and then he just goes up and finishes. Fourteen and nine last night in their win against Portland. Almost all that in the second half completes the three-point play. He's a very good free throw shooting big man. So good start here for BYU. Nine four. Michael Graham in for LMU. Shelton this time matched up against Williams. Had to give it up. Got it back off the deflection and a good shot fake. But there's George with the block shot. LMU keeps it. Shot clock did not reset. Shelton from the corner. No. And now the Cougars want to run. They've got numbers. Johnson back to Robinson. Count the basket and a foul. So a timeout on the floor, 15-55 still to go in the first half. What a nice start for BYU, though. Unselfishness, great defense, turnovers leading to offense. Keep the Cougars out of transition. If you don't, they're going to advance. Conferences mean circle dates. Legendary careers at one place. A star is born. It's a neighborhood on hardwood. Settling scores. Win this game if we do us. Now the time has come for tickets to be punched. And titles won. Welcome to Champ Week. Best time of the year, and of course, here on ESPN, we got coverage across all our platforms, 31 conferences, 510 games for Champ Week. That count is already underway. Over a 1,000 hours of college hoops. And you and I are doing most of them. I mean, that's what I'm so excited about. No, it's going to be unbelievable. So much fun. You and I here in Vegas, it's going to feel like a 1,000 hours by the time you and I are out of here on Wednesday morning. But... You're going to crown a champion. It's a special time of year. Everybody talks about wanting to see the NCAA tournament expanded. It already is. This is your opportunity right now. If you're BYU and you're LMU, you want to you want to punch a bid to the NCAA tournament? It's real simple. Win tonight, win on Monday, win on Tuesday, and you're in. It's that simple. Vegas has something of everything. Not a lot of clocks, though. So who knows? I have How no long idea. we'll be here tonight? Is it tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> and a travel. So wipe off the basket. Chance Stevens just in the game. Thought he had the bucket instead. It's another LMU it's turnover. True. There's not a clock in my room. Yeah, next no. to my bed. No, they don't want you to know. Dallin Hall off the bench now for BYU. He's had some. Really great moment. It's been overall a positive freshman year for him. I think he's going to be really good. I think he's going to be a very, very solid player for BYU moving forward. He need to grow. He's got confidence, has good understanding of how to attack the on-ball screen. Down low, Triore. Double team came. In fact, a triple team came, and that forced to travel. They said that almost more foul than the travel. I mean, they, they were hands scrapping and reaching 
uh, on the reception of that ball. Atiki Ali Atiki will come in and Traore goes to the bench for the first time. A big stat right now. BYU has zero offensive rebounds. What was the first thing that Stan Johnson, when we spoke with him earlier today, said? Got to rebound the ball. So even without those offensive boards, BYU does have the early lead. Long way to go. We're only five minutes in. That was an awkward looking play. It's not always beautiful with LMU. I mean, they are a team that relies so much on just effort, toughness. They go through some moments where, I mean, the offense has not been pretty in these first five minutes. Isn't that most of college basketball, though? I think that is true. I mean, it, it really is, Jay. This year in particular, like, if you play hard every single possession, you'll have a chance to win a game in college basketball. Like, we overcomplicate things when it comes to, oh, you got to run this action or that action or this talent. The talent margin isn't that big. It's how you compete, how hard you play every single possession. Does your coach have to teach you to play hard? Jackson Robinson's playing hard with the steal! Oh, the dunk! Big time play. Oh, by the way, you also have to limit your turnovers. Wide open three. Shelton didn't hit it, and then a foul by the big man, Asanza. BYU is energized. Well, you know, the, the one thing you know about BYU is they're going to be physical. This team in particular this year has been able to defend. And LMU, if you're going to be careless with the basketball, they're going to run out and they're going to score. And they've been able to do that early in this game and points off the turnovers, creating opportunities for them to have success. When Jackson Robinson plays well, he's a talented young man. BYU has a higher ceiling. They, they are a better team. When he's making shots and as active as he's been in these first few minutes, catch and shoot three. Ooh. Somebody opened up a door. There was, well, I felt a little breeze. I did. It's it Vegas. Oh, Waterman committed the David foul. Copperfield from the MGM moved the hoop. <laughs> Waterman gets his second foul. He's got to leave the game. Richie Saunders, the freshman coming off maybe the best game of his career, highest scoring game of his career, is in for the first time. You and I like him a lot. We've watched him throughout the course of the season. We think he's going to be the next annoying player for BYU. <laughs> you know, and I mean that with the utmost confident, er, compliment. It's, it's like when you think about all the players in Duke, Carolina, there's always that one guy that every opponent goes, I don't like that guy. But yet you want him on your team. I think he has a chance to be that guy, and I think that's an important role, to play with an edge, to bring some fight and a little bit of grit to the court and change the game when you take the floor. That's what 1-5 in blue does when he's at his best, and he certainly was at his best last night. Wow, what a move from Dallin Hall after a much-needed LMU bucket, the crossover step-back three. He starts adding that to the repertoire on a consistent basis. I don't know that we've seen that one in all the BYU games you and I have had this year. But do you agree with me on Richie? I do. I, I, I think he's going to be a big, big part as this team transitions to the Big 12. You need to have that guy, and he's that guy. Oh, it's Merck Veladze. Two really big baskets on back-to-back -back possessions. That one was a three. Well, he's looking for offense right now. Saunders tried to lead his teammate Robinson and threw it away. This has been a phenomenal start by BYU. Mark Pope could not have diagrammed this thing up. If he, if he scripted it and said, okay, hey, Fleming, Farnham, this is what I want this thing to look like, this would be it. Uh, Cam Shelton has really not got involved in this game yet offensively whatsoever. Their defense has been elite. They've got deflections. They really haven't allowed LMU to have many, too many good possessions where we watch them play down here and go, well, that was a really good possession. And it's not because they're not trying to run their stuff. It's just that how disruptive... BYU is being. I mean, look at that play right there by Spencer Johnson on the dribble handoff. Ken Shelton had no room. He tripped and fell on his own feet. Play Pepe Saunders got a hand on the ball. Hall couldn't steal it away. And there's Anderson. Missed the shot. What a great defensive possession by BYU. Both Johnson and Saunders. Eliotiki, not an outside shooter at all. You were back to the step back. You look like you trying to get to the step back again. He had a little room. Big man had it stripped away, fell down, travel. Trying to do a little bit too much right there. Just catch it, pass it back out. If your base was too narrow, allows you to get pushed off your line. But 
big out getting pushed off your line. Just excellent defense by BYU. And that started with Spencer Johnson getting through and staying on the hip of Cam Shelton. And then Richie Saunders just gets his hands deflection, hauls to the floor, bodies everywhere. Every time there's a 50-50 ball right now, you're seeing the blue jersey get down first. And I, and I know Stan Johnson's going to be talking about that with his team because you have to match the level of intensity and the effort and right now, the effort on the defensive side is with BYU, and it shouldn't come as a surprise if you've watched this team compete all season long, one of the best defenses in the conference, and that's with St. Mary's, who's one of the best defenses in all of college basketball. Gideon George almost got another steal. Cam Shelton having a hard time just finding some operating space. Tried to go by the big man. Atiki did a good job. Another drive. Here's Shelton, open three. Good! That, the problem there was they left one guarding two, and Trey Stewart left Cam Shelton open, and that was the first defensive breakdown we've seen in guarding number 20. Stewart, who just came in the game. Rudy Williams. Rudy's got to get a shot off in the lane. Step back, fall away, short, rebound LMU. Lions starting to stabilize here. Nice pass into the corner and then an air ball. Leia Pepe there to put it back in. Leia Pepe, I mean, guy looks like he could be fighting in the UFC tonight at T-Mobile Arena, maybe the WWE. He's got shoulders for days and just got an unfortunate and unfortunately the shot was so poor that it went right to him I mean if you're BYU you're like that's pretty good possession but it was an air ball and went right to Leia Pepe Leia Pepe finally getting a chance to play in this tournament they left Williams wide open and he makes a three we've seen him get in rhythm and flow a couple of times this year and he brings a little added element to this offense he's a good player Richie Saunders getting an assignment right now on Cam Shelton. And Pepe set the screen. This is what you want if you're LMU. If you can get to this and you can try to get Cam Shelton to attack Ali Atike. And they're going to get that foul with him reaching out and touching him. Mark Pope didn't like the call, but that is a tough matchup for BYU. Shelton took advantage. Of you got to try to eliminate that matchup. Meanwhile, offensively, there hasn't been a matchup that hasn't worked out well for BYU so far. Their efficiency has been off the charts in the first 10 minutes. You hate coming home to a dark house, and leaving lights on all night drives utility bills out of sight. You need the Bell & Howell Bionic Spotlight, the outdoor motion sensor light that turns on the instant motion is detected and turns off when the motion stops. Bionic Spotlight is solar powered, so there's no expensive wiring or batteries to change. The instant the motion sensor detects movement, Bionic Spotlight triggers eight high-intensity LED lights that shower the entire area with light and then shuts off 30 seconds after it stops. So you can spend hundreds of dollars on an outdoor light Lighting system, or you can get the motion activated Bionic Spotlight for just $19.95 with free shipping. Bionic Spotlight is backed by our five year warranty. But wait, if you order right now, you can double the offer and get a second Bionic Spotlight. Just pay a separate fee. And when you call, ask about the contractor's discount on the complete six light home value set. Here's how to order call 1-800-642-4851 or go to bionicspotlight.com. That's 1 800 642 4851 or order online at bionicspotlight.com. First quarterfinal here tonight in Vegas in the WCC 4 seed LMU, 5 seed BYU. Lions, really nice year for LMU. First time they've won nine games in league play since 2011-2012. Sean mentioned it early. Since BYU joined this league, no team until Stan Johnson's Lions this year had beaten the Zags, the Gales, and BYU in the same season. Cam Shelton, first team all-conference, tied with Drew Timmy as the scoring leader in the WCC. How about the fact Drew Timmy's only home loss? His whole career. LMU. I mean, just what Stan Johnson has done has been remarkable. And, you know, for a program, and we'll talk about the historical aspects of LMU, we always do, especially this time of year. But... It was the team that made me fall in love with, with college basketball. First game I ever went to. I tell it all the time. 131-110 final score in Moraga. And it was Bo Kimball and Hank Gathers just weeks before Hank collapsed on the floor and, and passed away in what was such a tragic loss. But 
that team and the way that they played made me fall in love with the game. Tonight is the anniversary of the great Hank Gathers death 33 years ago today. And we, One of my we, favorite players of all time, still to this day. And we overuse unique and words like that. That there's been no team like that in the history of college basketball, like that LMU team. None. Yeah. Trying to get back close to that level. Nice pass, a whistle, and they're going to call a foul underneath the basket, a block. Well, I'll tell you too, for Stan Johnson, obviously different system, different style than that team. But the pride of LMU, you know, and, and to see the student body come out this year and support this team at home and storm the court and have those moments, it's just great. I mean, that, that, that's what college athletics is about. So much of champ week and so much of college is about connection with your student body and pro having pride in your school. And it's some, more often than not, maybe too often, it comes through sports. Another block under the basket, same spot. I mean, whether it's the Rock at BYU, I mean, we get a bunch of students here tonight. But it, it's it's really what college, to me, again, I'm jaded. I play basketball at UCLA, so I sit there and I looked at the den, which is our student section at UCLA, and I thought, I mean, this is, this is what it's all about. Have fun, connect with all of them. They all made the trip down here. Have a great time. Watch their team, cheer them on, maybe inspire them to a victory, and be part of something special. It's a memory. Robinson will inbound for BYU. Saunders had it stripped away, and now the loose ball goes to Shelton. Cam Shelton scores. No whistle. <laughs> There's, I think, a sweat spot on the floor they need to wipe up. Two other players were tangled back in the backcourt. Good defensive hands and leads to a run out. Cam Shelton trying to start igniting this offense, and he can get going in a hurry. Once he gets cooking, he can cook. I think that was a good no call, by the way, on that layup. They were, you know, these two teams are going to be physical all night long, so it, it just determines, okay, are we going to foul everybody out of the game, and what, what, to what level are we going to allow them to be physical? Because both of these two programs have thrived with being physical on the defensive end before. Curry, Great pass. nice catch, one dribble, shot swatted, gets the ball back, and missed the layup. And there's Leia Pepe to rip it away, and he gets fouled by Gideon George. Now, I will tell you, there was a foul on the catch when Foos got it. They threw it, that is a foul. Oh, You're reaching time. from behind, grabbing Foos Traore, and the officials missed it. Uh, and then you get Gideon George. It was over the top. Le Pepe thought it was on him. That's how many fouls there were in that possession, that everybody thought the foul was on them. <laughs> but they, you got to call the first one. And the first one was on Foose. It's one thing to let players play. Gideon George, who just committed his second foul, almost his third. I mean, you're right. On cue, you were talking about how physical this game has a chance to get. It is really physical right now. Spencer Johnson's done a really good job when they've gotten into the half court of contesting and trying to make Cam Shelton life miserable. Did it again. Williams almost traveled. That's a push off. Robinson got away with it, missed the shot, air ball. It goes out of bounds. I love this week, man. I never will take this week for granted with you. You and I have been here, and we have called many games in here. It's something different this time of year when we get into this building. You just feel the level of importance, and you're seeing it on the court between these two teams right now. Well, we've seen over the years so many incredible, almost out-of-body individual games. Teams play harder than they ever have all year long. And there's a nice move. Shelton got right around Johnson. Well, he reached, and as soon as he reaches, that, that allows Cam Shelton to know where he's at. Shelton, Traore landed right on top of him. And that'll be a timeout. BYU will have the ball when we come back. LMU's right back in this game, though, after the quick start by the Cougars. From Las Vegas on a Saturday night, there's a lot going on in this town tonight, isn't there? Uh, yeah, UFC going down the road. Uh, you had the A's playing the Reds. Maybe this is the future home of the athletics. You don't know. You have NASCAR in town. You have those guys in town. And you have those numbers on the left-hand side of your screen. Look at those numbers. We put them really big so you can see them very clearly. 
LMU started to make some shots. They were down 11 in the early minutes of this game. The lead for BYU is now three with 7.33 to go in the first half. Here's the problem right now for, for BYU is LMU's doubling them up in shot attempts. 22 shot attempts to 11. Percentage-wise, you're at 64% for BYU, but you have seven turnovers, and you've given up seven offensive rebounds already in this game. Woo. Seven in this town can be an unlucky number. Right now it is for BYU. You still have to teach me that game. I'm horrible at it. I just play the pass line all the time. Robinson rattles down the three. <laughs> Huh. 23-17. LMU with the ball. The good shooting continues for BYU. Those offensive rebounding numbers for LMU. BYU's the team that's been killing everybody on the glass. Cam Shelton has also come to life. He's got it going a little bit right now. He's made four of ten after a 0 for three start. So he's got nine of LMU's 19. They're going to call the foul against Lewis, the sophomore wearing that big knee brace. A lot of fear that he was out for the year. He hadn't played in a while. He's back tonight, and he's committed two fouls. Good young player, though. Bonus time on both sides. Trey Stewart one, trying to earn one. a second free throw, front end of a one and one here. And we do welcome you to Las Vegas. Those of you who have been with us for an incredible OVC championship game, congrats to Simo. Punching their ticket. Champ week in the WCC here. Quarterfinal game number one. LMU and BYU back. Very physical, spirited first half. BYU has the ball up four. I love champ week. The buzzer beater that tied that game right before us. We were on air. We saw it at a commercial break. What a phenomenal shot that was. We might have one of those here tonight because uh, we've got two really good games here in the West Coast Conference. Triore ripped the ball away, but a jump ball. Kind of a quick whistle there. Ball goes back to LMU. Here's what the bracket in the WCC looks like. This tournament, if you're not familiar with the WCC, set up a little different than most. Triple by for the top two seeds, double by for the four and threes. LMU and Santa Clara playing their first games in this tournament here tonight. BYU had to win to get into this quarterfinal round. So did San Francisco. They play Santa Clara in the second game of the quarterfinals after this one's finished. Got it? I, I've, I've got it figured out. I hope everybody at home does. It was a great start to the second half last night for BYU. They erased a 13-point deficit in four minutes with just toughness, rebounding, and defense. Their defense has been pretty good here tonight. Their turnovers have caused them some problems. Rudy Williams open in transition and hits the three, his second three of this first half. Now, offensively, this is about as good as I've seen BYU play all season long. Out minus the turnovers. That's been the one issue. They're shooting the ball beautifully. Marble picked up his dribble. Shot clock starting to wind down. Cam Shelton, first team, all West Coast Conference, leading scorer in the league, got fouled on the floor. And it, what Stan Johnson's doing a great job of is late in the shot clock, he is lifting the five, man. And he's forcing Ali Atiki to have to guard Cam Shelton on a switch. I think if you're Mark Pope, you want to protect your big and you've got to you've got to figure out how you're going to defend that without the switch and to me you can flat hedge and if you're going to go fight over the top in this case spencer johnson he's got to fight through faster harder and make sure he gets there so cam shelton what a year top 15 score in all of d1 hoops makes the first of two free throws his numbers are silly uh, last five games in particular averaging almost 31 points per game had a 40 spot in there as well. Hit the huge shot in Spokane. First win for any team at Gonzaga in 75 games. He works out a little bit too. <laughs> He's looking pretty physical at the line. 
Made them both. He'll sub out. He won't be out for long. Just a remarkable transformation. Guy scored a thousand points in the Big Sky. Transferred to LMU, second year in this program. He was voted captain last year on the team, and they, they were really undersized and tried to play small ball. It didn't work, and they added some length this year, and it's made a world of difference. This has worked a lot better. There's a foul against the freshman Chance Stevens trying to guard Spencer Johnson. So Johnson will go to the free throw line. We have had some whistles here in this first half. It's hard to blame the officiating crew. I think this time of year, Sean, you you, you hope that the players, not the officiating, decides things. You, you sort of wish for games where they let them play a little bit, but these two teams have just been pounding on each other. Well, it's the M.O. of both of them. I mean, we, we, you and I knew what it was going to be before we showed up, and I'm sure these officials did as well. And it just comes down to part of it's the norming of the game, right? Like, what are you going to see over and over again that you're like, well, I can't call it every single time. That, that, that's the human nature of officiating in these moments. Well, Johnson missed the front end. That's the second front end of a one-on-one -on -one that BYU has missed. Leaving some points out there. Even though overall shooting the ball so well. With no Shelton on the floor, where does the offense come from for LMU? Marble, three, too strong. And rebound goes to Johnson. Well, there lies the problem is, is where does the offense come from with the group that's on the floor right now? It might be Leia Pepe. And he's averaging 13 and a half points per game, and he's got off to a little bit of a sluggish start. They moved him to the four this year, which Dan Johnson told us is really important for his health. You mentioned it earlier. This is the first time he played in this tournament in two years. Triori had it knocked away. Arns then gets fouled from behind. <laughs> Justin Arns looking for a teammate. Will somebody come over and help me get up, please? He got some help. He pops up. He'll be at the free throw line when we come back to Las Vegas. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. When you take care of your team, they take care of business. My principal quarterfinal night on a Saturday night. Unmistakable where we are. Yeah, we're in Las Vegas. 3.52 to go until halftime, 26-21. That's the BYU lead. Dave Fleming, Sean Farnham. You and I get to see so much hoops in the West Coast Conference. If you're up late, if you're not out west, stay up late with us. If you haven't seen this league, it's Saturday night. What else you got to do? If you've had a bad Saturday, we could be your last <laughs> hope. Uh, look, it, it has been sensational to be here in Vegas. And, of course, this tournament always brings out the best. And what we've seen so far in the first half is it's been a competitive game. Every Every bit is what we thought it would be physical surprising the number of turnovers and offensive rebounds uh, that LMU has been able to create because the efficiency numbers are off the charts for BYU at the offensive end yeah that guy's into it by the way coming up at halftime or all-state halftime report wild finish and that sort of undersells it in the OBC Bracketology with Joe we get you up to, to date on how Joe's feeling about the whole thing and just a day full of great college basketball. Not over. Arns hits the front end of the one and one Because not only do we have this game, BYU-LMU, we have San Francisco and Santa Clara. Santa Clara, one of the hottest teams in the country, a real threat. And they got a pro. They do. We said it last year with Jalen Williams, and there are some of you on Twitter that wanted to come at me and go, ah, you don't know what you're talking about. He's been pretty good. But they got another one this year. Brandon Pajemski, if you haven't seen him, he can really go. So that you do have to stay up pretty late for that one. But if you do, you're going to get rewarded. And Santa Clara, look, it's no gimme. They get the win tonight. But that's a team that legitimately could run the table here in Vegas and be a bid stealer. Saunders back in off the bench for BYU. Under four minutes to go, first half. Jackson Robinson. Allen Hall trying to get some separation. Step back. Three in and out. He hit one of those earlier in the first half. Not this time. Well, you could tie the game with a three. Here's a three. Lea Pepe. Good. Uh, he has really improved his three-point shot. Percentage-wise, 
He's the best on the team. Now, he doesn't take a lot of them. It's not the overall strength of his game, but he has become a lot more skilled and able to float out as a four-man than he was as the undersized five. Maya Pepe reached in and committed his second foul. So that's a big whistle, but on the other end, just what you were talking about. You see the drive, it, it, you really can't help off a ball side. If you help off a ball side, that's what you're going to give up. And you know, Division One players at this level, they're going to knock that shot down. If you if you got your feet set behind that line, that means that you're confident enough to take the shot. Leia Pepe's done that. The unforgettable. Best Leia hair in college Pepe. basketball. Senior from Melbourne, Australia. Debate that you and I have every year. Do not mess with that dude. I, the WWE has an NIL thing, and I can't believe that they didn't sign him. He's the biggest no-brainer in the sport. I mean, seriously. Well, Spencer Johnson just a moment ago missed the front end. He gets a second chance at a one-on-one. -on -one. Tie game. BYU led by 11 in the early minutes. Really quick start for Mark Pope's team. They're shooting 64%. It's nine turnovers. It's seven offensive rebounds. Those are those two areas get cleaned up. They'd be running away with this game right now But instead LMU Doing what Stan Johnson has had his team do all year long. They're just gritty. They're tough They scratch they claw and, and they just wear on you over the course of the game Had a remarkable come from behind win against St. Mary's Where they they literally just refused to quit Saunders got knocked off balance playing defense So a little bit of scramble mode for BYU the three almost banked in no good from Merck Veladze Spencer Johnson really good at that sort of just maneuvering in traffic and then he's a really nice mid-range shooter as well Getting where they want to. I mean, the ball has gotten consistently where they want it to be at, which is why their percentage and the quality of shot they've seen is so high. Marble got fouled. But the consistency of the pressure that LMU applies, and it's not just with the defense, they, they apply pressure at the offensive side of the ball, trying to attack, trying to turn the corner and get downhill. Well, for the 38th year champ week on ESPN, continuing tomorrow, Sunday, four women's basketball title games. Let's run through them. ACC, 1 p.m. Eastern, Louisville, Virginia Tech. Then in the SEC, Tennessee and South Carolina. Great matchup at 3 Eastern. Then flip the page. Big Ten title game after that over on ESPN 2. It's the Pac-12, Washington State and UCLA. Okay, we needed to flip it a little faster. Well, we'll get there. It's the first time for you and I going through that promo. Relax. We're going to do it seven more times before we're out of here tonight. <laughs> All right. Jeez. We're getting Frankie Mark early, practice. Fleming. Oh. It's champ week. Can we enter the week with, like, a little bit of joy and happiness? <laughs> I, I can't wait to watch those games. I will tell you. How about that? Caitlin Clark beats Indiana last week, then beat Maryland today to advance to that game. What an unbelievable season she's had. But that championship game in the Pac-12 is the, maybe the most surprising final that you will see in women's college basketball this champion. Oh, used the screen and knocked down the three. Washington State knocked off Utah. They were perceived as a one seed. Maryland now moves up according to Charlie Cream. Your Stanford Cardinal lose to UCLA. What? Kiki Rice, 21 last night. Corey Close has her team playing for a championship. It is going to be fantastic. Oh, that's an offensive foul against Cam Shelton. That's an easy one. Push off. That arm got up high. Pushed off on the drive. No need to do it. You know, he's got such strong shoulders. He doesn't need to extend out. It was quick. But yeah. you lift up like that, that's an easy one. And Cam knows it. So he's got two fouls. LMU's leading scorer. He checks out of the game for the final minute and a half. And what's the point of all those crazy results on the women's side? This week, anything can happen. I mean, it's unpredictable, and that's what makes it fun. And it usually does. Robinson, pull up. No good. Nice rebound. Saunders almost stole it away. There's that pass, and Atiki grabs the loose ball. What a play by Saunders. Screened by the official. Sean Lehi was in the way. Help <laughs> BYU get the layup. A moving screen on the official. Somebody blow their whistle. That's illegal. How about the hustle, though? Richie Saunders 
We mentioned it earlier. He's the guy you love to have on your team, and the opponents hate to see. He's always making the hustle play. He's giving you everything he has on every single possession. That extra possession there, good screen by the official, and the dump down underneath. Six off five. It's not fair, Dave. BYU on a scoring push. So the Cougars up 35-27, final minute of this first half. The freshman Richie Saunders coming off the best game of his career. Hasn't scored prolifically in this game so far, but what an effort play by him. It doesn't matter. He changes the game when he's out on the floor. Uh, and, I, and I just love what he brings. He, again, he's going to be the guy. Oh, what a slot. Hello. Atiki. The intensity of Champ Week is so much fun, man. Every possession matters. How dialed in are you? Right now, BYU dialed in in the late stages of this first half. Wouldn't it be a story? I mean, this is the last year for BYU and the WCC. They've never won a conference regular season title. They've never won the conference tournament championship. They've had a, by their standards, down year, disappointing year. What if they're the team that makes the unexpected run? Remember how many people saw Oregon State a couple years back in the Pac-12 tournament as the team that was going to make a run and then go all the way to the Elite Eight? Nobody. It's the best time of year, man. It's, it's one and done. Wow. Great defense. And that was Saunders again. It was Hall with the help. It was everybody. I, I love Saunders. He is going to be so much fun to watch as he evolves and grows. The defense, look at Johnson swarming being there. Saunders again, active hands. A couple times, he's got at least four or five deflections. Hall comes down and pinches in. There's no space whatsoever to operate and run your offense. Right now, BYU is just being that disruptive at the defensive end of the floor. They're blowing up all of LMU's actions. And they can almost, I'm sure they're going to treat it like it's a shot clock off situation. They're going to try to make sure they get the final shot in this first half. Hall's done a nice job since coming in the game. Use the screen. Robinson got cut off. Here's Hall. Shot clock down to three. Launches. Good! For way outside. And the horn will sound. What a finish to the half for BYU. The efficiency offensively in a first half where they shot 68% from the field. You saw the crispness. But everything that they've wanted to do, they've been able to accomplish. 68% shooting in the first half compared to LMU's 34%. The difference maker has been the number of shot attempts. Ten more shot attempts by LMU has kind of kept them in this game. And mainly those have come from the offensive glass. Eight offensive rebounds. They just haven't been able to convert on any of them. LMU got the game tied. BYU from that point on finished the first half on a 12-1 run. So that's the lead, 11, and BYU has the ball to start the second half. Jackson Robinson, who had some nice moments for the Cougars in that first half, draws an immediate foul. And then, really a sloppy play. They're going to count the basket. Rick Asanza, I don't think he was even really thinking about the way it was playing out. That shot was definitely not going in, but it's a goaltend. Yeah, no chance this shot was going in, but it hit the glass. And an easy call and just giving up points. Yeah. I and mean, that shot had no chance. No it chance. Gonna, it was not even going to hit rim. So now one free throw for Robinson who misses it. And Asanza does grab the defensive rebound. But BYU has its biggest lead of the game right now. They need Cam Shelton to get going and take over this game. That turnover is not going to help. Yeah, he got it picked. Johnson on the move, just had to fling it up. I think he was falling down. Triore, offensive rebound in traffic, and a jump ball. Good job by LMU to swarm him under the basket. Lions will get the ball back. Every time Foos gets his hands around the basket, you can see a point of emphasis to try to limit him. You've got three LMU Lions really going to the ball. They're over committing to Foos, and they're not really allowing him to pivot and pass out. Last night, he had offensive rebounds. They dumped the ball down low in the paint, and they played out of it and found a lot of three-point shots in the second half. 
Winner advances to Monday's semifinals. No games tomorrow here in the WCC. Two of these quarterfinals tonight. Here is Cam Shelton. Had to miss the last couple minutes of the first half with two fouls. Little runner is good. Yeah, just four of ten shooting in the first half. And the numbers he's been putting up throughout the course of the year, they've been big numbers, but they've been efficient numbers. This has not been an efficient game for Cam Shelton just yet. Might end up that way. Robinson all the way to scoop it in. That is too easy. Didn't show on the on ball screen, had nobody coming over from the help side posi position, and it was a wide open layup. You can call a foul away from the ball against BYU. Dave, let's go back to that last possession. BYU comes off the on ball screen. Watch this. I mean, no, you're hugging your man, nobody is stepping over, and just far too easy. And if you're LMU right now, you're looking up and saying, guys, we're down by 13. You gotta start stringing together some stops and steal the momentum. The 13-point deficit last night for BYU. They erased it in four minutes against Portland. LMU's got to have that same kind of hungry and sense of urgency mentality that the Cougars had last night. Shelton, long two. That one goes down. So back-to-back -back buckets for Cam Shelton. Tied with Drew Timmy for the scoring lead in the regular season in the WCC. Gideon George tried to enter it to Triore. Ball caromed over to Rudy Williams. Robinson, long three. And Triore went over the back. That's going to be a foul against him. And Mark Pope is saying, Foosh, good job. They want him to continue to be that aggressive. But that was, that's one I think you got to understand position where the ball is at. I love the effort. I love how much he goes after it. But that was almost a suplex. Right? I mean, he was lifting for the ball and the man at the same time. Stevens curled around, missed the three. That did not get his shoulders square on that one. He loves to shoot the three-point shot. And then he came in with a foul. Jane Stevens, third personal foul for him. They like to get him going because he can help space out the floor. He's a three-point shooter only. Tonight so far for LMU to get those outside shots off. That was a really sort of subtle defensive play by Marble. He kind of pulled the chair on Triore who traveled. Yeah, and what happened on the roll, he actually was behind the backboard. He rolled too deep that time. He was underneath the rim. And Marble did a great job of just backing away. And Bruce was trying to lay into the contact and, and lost his balance. 11 turnovers. I mean, that has been the problem for BYU. Otherwise, their offense has been so good. Traore commits another foul. Count the basket plus a free throw for Marble. That's why the foul down at this, the opposite end of the floor on the rebound is so key because this is the one that you, you, you're okay with him challenging. He's got to try to stay up and keep his hands straight up as soon as he brings that arm down. Easy for the officials to call that with the body. Tough game for Foose Traore, who's played so well down the stretch. Only the five points, three fouls. He himself has been charged with seven of the BYU turnovers. Seven. Tough. And a lot of that is because the collapsing defense in which LMU is bringing to him every single time he catches the ball. Nice free throw. Free throw shooting not been great on either side. Johnson, three, way off the mark. Here's Cam Shelton, went right by down the lane, counted and a foul. Well, that is a great miscommunication. No talking on the defensive end of the floor. Very similar to what we saw out of the LMU earlier in this second half. I mean, just a wide open scene. For Cam Shelton to attack, Robinson was late coming over, but Robinson's like, man, I'm not supposed to help off a ball side corner with a three-point shooter standing at the three-point line. 
So Cam Shelton, six quick points here in the last couple minutes. A chance for another one at the free throw line. And the feel of the game has really changed in the last minute or so. He can get going and, and get going in a big time way. And right now he's got that look like he doesn't want this to be the final game of the season. Seven nothing run for LMU in a minute and a half. Oh, shot blocked. Here comes LMU and Shelton. Hesitated, now goes to the basket, and another one for Cam Shelton. The change of speed, a little st stop and start move by Cam Shelton, and then the upper body strength. All the off-season workouts on the cardio, on the strength development in his shoulders. And a physical specimen that can flat out score the ball at an elite level. Great body control, great finish, and the Lions are saying, hey, we're still in this thing. Thing run for LMU, and what was a 13-point lead for BYU is down to four, and Cam Shelton's been leading the way. Cam Shelton's picking up, and we talked about the first half, four of ten, four for four here to start the second half. And... We mentioned last five games, averaging 31 points per contest. He's up to 20 now. They're going to need him over that 30-point mark with the way that this game has gone in order to claw out a victory here tonight. And if you're BYU, you gotta you got to start adopting that defense you had in the first half, making life difficult and trying to challenge him to do something different. Shoot over hands, contested shots. Don't allow him to get a seam all the way to the basket because that's where he's really been hurting. And BYU at the offensive end, find your rhythm that you had in the first 20 minutes. Get that bounce back in your step. Transition buckets were good for you. Starts from your defense, building out towards your offense. A big offensive rebound for BYU. Rudy Williams, tough contested shot, no good. Oh, you can get even closer. Foul against Gideon George. I think BYU's fouls are starting to pile up too. Piling up because LMU has come out of the locker room in similar fashion to what BYU did to Portland last night. They're the aggressor. They're the bringing the punch to the fight right now. And you had to expect that if you're BYU. Now how do you counter after absorbing it for the first four? So why LMU does not want this to be a one-and-done WCC tournament is it's been such a special year for the Lions. Well, you have to have belief, right? You look at the top two teams, you're like, it's the Gonzaga Bulldogs, it's the St. Mary's Gales. They've been up there all season long. And then you look at LMU, like, wait, they won in Spokane? Nobody wins in Spokane. Stan Johnson's team won in Spokane. A big, big win for the program. And then they followed it up with a big-time win against St. Mary's. It was Cam Shelton doing a lot of what he's been doing here to start the second half. Attacking downhill. He can score with either hand. He has a great way of seeing the seam and being able to get it done. And they survived in overtime and they were partying out on the floor. The students were there. They were live. And it was fun. You have to do it. You have to dream it. You have to see it. You have to achieve it to believe it. And for LMU, they're looking at this tournament saying, okay, why not us? It, our path would be clear. We have to beat BYU. We did that. We have to beat Gonzaga and St. Mary's. I mean, we've, we've done that. So this is a group that's, that's focused and, and believes, and right now they've come out in the second half playing like this. Down 13 just a few minutes ago. They haven't been in the semifinals of this tournament in a decade. Anthony Ireland was the star of that team. That made an improbable run of four games in four days. Shelton step back three didn't go. Those are the type of shots they want him to take. Contested step back threes. They'll give those up. Much better job defensively on him coming out of that timeout. Well, Waterman in for BYU. He got two quick fouls in the first half. Traore still on the bench with his three fouls. Here's Saunders down the lane. Somehow, I don't know if he was trying to pass it to Hall. Ooh. Hall short-armed it. Loose ball. And a foul against Saunders. 
Well, and, and you love the effort, and I applauded that effort in the first half. Here's the problem with that effort on this particular play. And now six fouls. There's 14 and a half minutes left to go, and one more foul, and LMU shooting free throws. This game might not be over until midnight at its current pace. Somebody call Chris Gerlofson and Herb sent that and tell him to slow down the buses. Have their teams cool it a little bit. One more game still to come here tonight in Vegas. Santa Clara, the three seed. San Francisco, the six seed. This is the 4-5 matchup in the quarterfinals. Shot clock under 10 and another BYU foul. Well, this is going to be a huge part of the story of this game. That means free throws for Cam Shelton. We have 14 minutes to go, and LMU's in the bonus. I just said we're not going anywhere. <laughs> we're not going anywhere, partner. I, I didn't think you were, like, literally meant that. I mean, just really tough. It, it, you like the way that you're showing out there, and Hall, to be honest, had a little bit of an argument there because I thought that the screen moved into him and actually initiated that contact from him into Cam Shelton. But the last thing we want to do is send Cam Shelton to the free throw line and allow him to find a rhythm. He didn't find it on that one. Missed the front end. Hall. A tiki. One dribble and just had nowhere to go. Gideon George. A little up and under move. Use the glass. That's a big bucket. The pass bank is what created that. Because, I mean, just kept driving the ball to the same spot three straight times. Three guys took it there. Lea Pepe knocked out of bounds and then it goes off of Lea Pepe. And Dave, let's go back to that last possession. I mean, this is not how you usually design offense. Drive it in, drive it in. You got three guys right there, a little pass fake. Shifts the big man, that creates the space. If he just stays and walls up there and stays true to the ball instead of shifting out of the way, there's, there's not a shot to be had there. His first bucket, Gideon George, who often is a very important scorer for BYU. That was a tough entry pass. And the scramble, LMU comes away with the ball. Another BYU turnover. Stevens, good quick move baseline, and then threw it towards his bench. Hall grabs a steal. Three on two. Hall stops. Now a foul against Lewis. Third foul against him. BYU went, what, four minutes without a bucket? Yeah. Lewis struggling again. You mentioned didn't think he was maybe even going to be able to come back this year, wearing a massive knee brace on his left knee. And has to yet to score. Has given some good effort plays, but three fouls. Waterman wanted to shoot the three. Goes back door to Saunders. Layup. Good with a foul. <laughs> I wasn't sure that possession was going to end well for BYU. Well, Richie Saunders. Great back cut. Pass barely gets there. Contact. Finishes through it. Easy to like watching this young man play. Perfect on the free throw, so that's a three-point play. You notice when he, when he made the free throw, he immediately dipped out and started sprinting back, even though there's a horn sound. I mean, just because it, it, it's in his mindset, i got to get back in defensive transition. And he, he has bought into the ideas of what Mark Pope wants and needs out of him. In a zone here, trying to give a different look to LMU. I like this decision here. They got to get, make sure they get into the gaps in the zone quickly. Anderson was off to the side on the three, saved in bounds by Shelton. Maybe that wasn't a good thing. George kicked ball as he tried to lead it to Saunders. Well, uh, all the work LMU did to get back close. They were at the free throw line trying to cut it down to a two point lead. And now they can't score. Almost four minutes. To me, knowing that it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, I start limiting the three-point shots unless they're the, exactly the shot you want to have. If you can drive, and we've seen how this game has been called, get on ball screens, drive and try to turn the corner, you're, you're going to get to the free throw line. Waterman was trapped and threw it away. Shelton comes away with a steal. Like, see, he should have driven right there. 
He does, and Atiki, another emphatic block. That's his second one of the game. I wouldn't have pulled it out. The pullout is what allowed Ali Atiki to get his feet set. Now you decide to go. Well, he's already there. So when he's coming down the floor trailing behind you, that's when you get into his body. He was too deep to be able to block your shot, but then you gave him space to recover and step to you. LMU does keep the ball. Shelton against Waterman. Good defense by Waterman. He had to give it up. The three goes down, though, for Marble. That's a big shot. Only the third three-pointer made for LMU tonight. He mentioned Waterman did a great job. His length was disrupted to Cam Shelton, but they were able to play out of it. So his baseline offensive foul. He pushed off. Timeout here in Las Vegas, 11.43 to go in quarterfinal number one in the WCC BYU with a six-point lead. Really good games. Kevin Durant now in Phoenix, Kyrie now in Dallas, Suns Mavericks. That's tomorrow, our NBA doubleheader on Sunday, tomorrow, 1 Eastern on ABC, streaming live on the app. And then after that, the Warriors Ooh. and the Lakers also on ABC. Warriors play Thompson. He's back without Curry. They've won five in a row, and Steph is supposedly going to play tomorrow. You see Jordan Poole the other night. Uh, if my son's watching at home, plug your ears, kid. He's a huge Clippers fan. Jordan Poole went off in the third quarter of that game. I mean, it was just unbelievable. KD with the Suns. Stretch run is going to be fun, especially in the Western Conference. So that's tomorrow. Here tonight in Vegas, WCC quarterfinals. LMU ball out of the timeout. Down six with 11 and a half to go. BYU had to win last night. Had to come from behind to win last night to get here. LMU had the double bye into the quarters. Cam Shelton challenged by Saunders. Loose ball. Shelton saves it. Marble down the lane. Couldn't get a shot off. And that one goes off the side of the backboard. Shot clock violation. Cam Shelton wanted to get a push as he was chasing down that ball. When he got back on the court, he got his feet set and was, was screaming for his teammates to find it. But Marble had already driven to, driven to the opposite side and just poor awareness there in the late shot clock. The big man, Rick Asanza, who has not made a huge impact in this game back in. Michael Graham also has been pretty quiet. I think his length out. just makes an impact in this game just because of how short BYU is. I, I do think you're right in that he doesn't have to put up a lot of stats to necessarily put an imprint on yeah. a game. I, I think one of the things you put on on him is how many turnovers does Foose have? Yeah, you're right. I mean, that, that's going to be a foul, but Foose has seven turnovers and is two of three shooting with five points and four rebounds. Those aren't Foose type numbers. I mean, we've seen a lot of games for him, and he he finds a way to make plays, and that length, though, tonight has bothered him. That's a good point. I don't think it's a coincidence that Stan Johnson saw Traore check back in the game and immediately went to his bench and got Isanza up and back in there. Sometimes the box score, you, you got to look at it in a different way because the numbers might not be there to show you the impact you're making out on the court. Good look for Rudy Williams, but he missed the shot. Telling you hanging in there. Can't lunge and reach. Richard Saunders got himself off balance. Here's Arns three. Good, Justin Arns, who wanted a chance for a four-point play. The backfill action that LMU brings on dribble, dribble drives is pretty good. Saunders had his shot blocked. Got the loose ball, though, so BYU still has it. Now a foul against LMU. Watch this on the drive by Cam Shelton. The defense starts to get sucked in. Watch Rudy Williams. He's looking at the ball, and, and you, you fill behind if you're the offensive player. Get to the wing and start relocating the corner. It just creates a little bit of a longer closeout. That longer closeout gives you a free, clean look at the hoop. Now Justin Arns, who's had such a star-crossed career in a lot of ways at Ohio State and now at LMU, all the injuries that have piled up. That's a big shot, though. Well, 79 percent of his makes this year are from beyond the arc. 84 percent of his points are from the three-point line. 
We should emphasize we said the foul was on Shelton. That is his third. So that's big. He almost ran into Rudy Williams who finds Johnson open. Three is good. That's the action that they ran in the second half last night. They attack the middle, look opposite, find a clean look. Spencer Johnson was ready. Arms running baseline. Just couldn't get a shot off. Pepe got it back from Arns. Now makes his move. Johnson went to the floor. Traore with the block. Robinson really How did that pass. get there? Somehow it did get there. A foul on the floor. That wasn't even a pass. He just fumbled it and it happened to end up in Foose's hands. But the possession before BYU was running great offense. When they start attacking, look at how the defense. You got four bodies collapsing to the paint. Really long closeout. You've got shooters on the outside. Williams reads it beautifully. Johnson was ready for it and dialed it in. So now both teams in the bonus. First one and one free throws for BYU. That's part of what makes Triore such a good player is he makes his free throws. He gets to the line a ton and he takes advantage of it. 77% free throw shooter on the season. time it looks like they're closing this thing down a little bit BYU's been able to find an answer so far here in the second half Shelton tough shot no good offensive rebound and a foul against the Cougars as Sanzo was trying to dunk it home and that's Triore that's number four with nine minutes still to go and if there's one problem with this BYU team is they don't have depth in the interior. They don't have size. They don't have guys that can match up down there. Who's just so important. They've asked him to do so much in this season and last. And he's gonna go to a he's gonna go to the bench here. And it's two free throws. We're doing a lot of shuffling around. Well, four subs at the table, two for each team. Sansa, not a great free throw shooter. 45%. There's two of nine from the free throw line in the last couple of games. The junior from Kinsasha, Congo. Started his career at Oklahoma. He made that one, so one of two for Rick Asanza. will come out of the game, Michael Graham. Who knows what Stan Johnson, he mentioned it when Foos came back in the game. They got him up. When Foos goes out with four fouls, they sit him back down. I mean, this is a chess match right now between these two coaches trying to buy time, keep their guys fresh, play to their strengths. Rudy Williams down the lane. Williams draws a foul. Well, right away with Asanza on the bench attacking at the rim. It wasn't Triore, but it was Williams. Yeah, I think that's the right move. I mean, Graham isn't as physical. Uh, he's got great length, but he's not as physical as an imposing figure around the basket. And a little bit of lateral quickness that Rudy Williams clearly had the advantage on on that attack. And a smart play by BYU. Rudy Williams, great free throw shooter. He made them both. Oh, leads back up to nine. Can LMU make another push here? They've done it twice already in this game. Look at that hustle right there, Ali Atiki. Yep. He just active the hands. Yeah, just active hands, being in the stance, having your hands out, 
And, and if you're careless with the basketball and expose it away from your body, a good defensive player right in front of you is going to say, I'm going to take that ball. I'm going to deflect it. I'm going to rip you. And that's exactly what he did. Johnson turns it into a layup. <laughs> We've done too many games together. <laughs> Timeout, LMU. They talk about Serge Jabari Rice's shot fake all the time at Texas. He's got the best in the country. There's no doubt about it. Big win for the Longhorns earlier today against Kansas. But a little shot fake in the corner. Spencer Johnson's like, I got that in my game as well. BYU's hoping for the same outcome. They want to win. They want to advance. Stick to being the analyst, would you? This is what you dream of. Two words. March Madness. Oh, well, we got so much good women's championship hoops for you coming up in the next few weeks. Election special on March 12th on ESPN. The first four, the first and second rounds. We got it all. Sweet 16, Elite Eight. The final four on ESPN of the championship game on ABC on April 2nd. And it's just been a banner year in women's college hoops. Great games, great and, finishes. And, and, and we've seen great, great teams step up and emerge throughout the course of the season. Maryland, Notre Dame's had some great runs. Olivia Miles has been outstanding for them. But it's been a fun season all around. Ka Caitlin Clark, Kiki Rice, Cameron Brink, so many talented players. Aaliyah Boston. I think this this tournament's good. Every year the women's tournament gets better and better. The depth gets better and better as we as people invest more money in these coaches. The Pac-12's had a banner year. Shelton with the shot clock winding down. That's a big basket of three for LMU. He's got 23. It's been a while though since he had scored. Under eight minutes to go. Rudy Williams goes all the way. Missed the layup. Waterman tried to grab the rebound. It goes out of bounds off him. I believe that ACC tournament, Carol Lawson's team, the Duke Blue Devils, are former colleague. I think they, they beat North Carolina. Low scoring affair, defensive minded. Always a big win. If you're Duke, you beat Carolina. They beat him on the men's side this afternoon in Chapel Hill. Duke's a team to look out for in the men's tournament. They're, they're starting to get it together a little bit. Jeremy Roach is so important. They're healthier. Those freshmen are playing more experienced, more composed. Their defense has been pretty good all year long, but their offense start, keeps getting better and better. Another late clock situation here for LMU. Shelton's got a launch. It was knocked away. The heave. They got the shot off. Long rebound. Shelton grabs it and scores. Nobody grabbed the ball. It was loose in the middle of the court. A little bit of a leak out action on the deflection by Rudy Williams instead of coming back into the play and re-engaging to secure the possession. He got the deflection and started floating. Remember that one in case this is a close game in the last minutes. Waterman three. Atiki with the offensive rebound. Williams. They just kind of let him go, so he'll go back to the free throw line. Ooh, Williams is asking for a flop. They gave you the foul. <laughs> and he didn't fall. You'd rather take the free throws. They called the foul. <laughs> Everybody wants a flop nowadays. It's become the symbol of college basketball in a way, is that, that flop signal. A lot like ESPN News has been the official home in the first four minutes of college basketball. I saw that as a tweet last week. And I thought it was hilarious because it, it more often than not becomes true. It was true tonight. I mean, most of you didn't join us until almost halftime. A sensational game right before us. And this one looks like it's heading down the wire as well. This free throw, a rare one for Williams. He'll make the second. I love this time of year. It is so much fun. The intensity of every possession matters. Oh. Offensive foul against Shelton. That's his fourth. Just 
Defensive positioning by Spencer Johnson all night long has been outstanding. He slid there, he's in a legal guarding position. You may not like it, but it's, it's the way it's been called all season long. And Spencer Johnson has been committed to the defensive effort tonight against Cam Shelton, which is a difficult, difficult assignment. And LMU's got to ride with their guy, but Cam Shelton's got four fouls. Rudy Williams has made some big plays in this second half for BYU. He's made big plays all game long. LMU's in trouble. Can Shelton rescue him? Trying to tip up, and that'll be a goal tap. Give Graham the basket. You know, this is, you know, we've seen a lot of performances this year in the WCC where players have had four fouls and they've stayed out on the floor. And Mahaney did it a couple of times, actually, for St. Mary's in some big games and big moments, including that win against Gonzaga and Moraga. Kim Shelton's going to take a break right now, but he's going to have to come back in this game quickly and play with four fouls and, and be smart, but yet continue to be aggressive like he was on that possession. Traore on the bench, quiet scoring game for some of BYU's other leaders, but Rudy Williams and company maintaining the lead. Johnson with a left hand, no. Ali Atiki kept the ball alive. Saunders passed up the open shot. This one's even more open, and it goes down. When your team consistently turns down a good one to get a great one, that's when you know things are working well. And that's an example of it, Dave, right there, as you mentioned. Saunders could have take the took, taken the shot. He didn't. He turned it down, found a better one. It's a beautiful thing to watch. The bench loves it. Cougars are thinking, hey, we're playing Monday. Pass up a heavier fan for a lighter fan to toss him in the air. BYU fans watching their team out to a 10-point lead. 62-52. The winner will take on the top seed, St. Mary's, on Monday night in the semifinals. BYU, in its last year in the West Coast Conference, every game that they play here this week has the chance to be their final game as a member of the WCC. I'm just disappointed in Tyson Jacks, the media relations director. Yes. He didn't bring me a cougar tail. This was his last chance to do it. I mean... I mean, come on, what are we talking about? He did have a brand new baby, Bethany, born a couple weeks ago. You give him a pass? He did draw a donut on a piece of paper and handed it to me and said it was a cougar tail. Yeah. Does that count? No. Oh. It's not edible, by the way. I tried. Cam Shelton drives oh. and missed it. Had a good look and just couldn't finish. But congratulations to Tyson and his newborn, his wife. Looked at the video earlier. We had him show it to us. Nothing better. Here's Spencer Johnson on the attack, and he'll go back to the free throw line. Leah Pepe thought he had a clean block. Johnson, who's got 12. Rudy Williams leading the way for BYU with 15. Mark Pope told us a couple different times this year, Sean, it's almost unfair. They asked Spencer Johnson a lot of times to be the best player. He's such a good player overall. He does so many things well. But There's the new dad. Again. But just again, disappointment, Tyson. No cougar tail. Yeah. Yeah, he knows it. Yeah. He knows it. That's why he's looking like that. He knows it. He's not even hearing us, and he knows it. <laughs> he does know exactly. There's only one reason <laughs> he does a great job at his actual job. LMU running out of time. And such a good year for the Lions. They need to dig deep. 
Here's a three. Good big shot. Marble hits one. Timeout. Stan Johnson at LMU. Yeah, good use of a timeout. There's going to be another timeout. The under four timeout. But ball movement, getting your feet set. We're able to knock, knock it down. So important. Late game. How LMU competes at the defensive end coming out of this timeout. Key. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. When you take care of your team, they take care of business. I love these Saturday nights in Las Vegas. All kinds of stuff going on around town. Two West Coast Conference quarterfinal games. BYU with 4.04 to go, leading LMU 64-55. Rudy Williams been really good. And he has been really good, and he's been aggressive. Probing, attacking, every single shot that he's had tonight, too. He's been on balance. Look how his feet are set underneath him. Smooth, not forcing anything. Playing with a compo composure about him that stands out. And to me, he's been key to this whole thing. At four of nine shooting, he's got to the free throw line six times. He's drawn five fouls in this game. He leads all scorers with 15 points. And when you're aggressive and you're the more aggressive team, and I think that's what they've done a really good job of tonight, good things usually happen. And you hinted at it there, too, on a night where BYU's been a little too careless with the ball. Zero turnovers for yeah. Rudy Williams. Some pressure here by LMU. Out See if the they stay out. in it. Ooh, they jumped it. Anderson went for the steal. That's it's, I think that's LMU ball. Wow. They said it was off of Jalen Anderson. Well, we've, we've seen BYU struggle with some pressure. Watch this as this is jumped the passing lane. We just deflected off. Oh, yeah, definitely off of LMU. I love, I love Stan Johnson bringing this out. Wow, now Marble called for the foul. So that means free throws on the other end, Juan Marble. And that's the sixth foul drawn by Rudy Williams. We just talked about it now. That one is just utilizing aggressiveness against him. I mean, that, that's a skill. A lot of that work, too, on that situation, Dave, it actually starts before the ball's even inbounded. What's your positioning? How are you shaped up? So when you receive the pass, are you in a position of being the aggressor to attack the pressure? Or are you in a passive situation where that pressure is going to be disruptive to you? Two more free throws for Williams. So often this year, down the stretch for LMU, it's been Cam Shelton. They need him to go on a real burst here. Against the shot blocker, another block for Ali Atiki. He's had a heck of a defensive game. He really has. And with Foos being on the bench, they've gone to this and they've tried to isolate him. LMU has. In these on ball screens to attack him, and at least a couple of times he's been able to get the better of it. Trying to get it in bounds, they have to go all the way back to the backcourt to do it. Shelton contested three, no. A tiki rebound, then he fell down, so that's a travel. It goes as a turnover, a dead ball turnover, but that's that's not going to frustrate Mark Pope. I mean, he, he loves the way he's seeing his big right now. Sky up for that rebound, try to eliminate second chance points. And the turnover problems have lessened in this second half. Saunders out, Gideon George in. I mean, LMU, only 327 left. They can't have empty possessions. Great out of bounds execution. Beautiful pass by Cam Shelton. Kelly Lea Pepe, hard to miss him coming off of a screen, but they lost him. And BYU wants to use some clock. Williams went right by to the basket. Here's a three, oh, way off the mark, and luckily for LMU, went off of BYU. I used to call those a waffle. If it doesn't hit the rim and it just smacks against the backboard, it's a, it's a waffle. 
Merck Falazze did not want to. He didn't want to shoot it. If you if you think about it, right? If you have to think about it before you shoot it, don't shoot it. Because that's a rhythm three. And what I mean by that, you're wide open on the kick out. Your feet have got to be set. You've got to be confident enough on that catch to think and know that that is a shot that off your fingertips you can make. The second you think and you hesitate, now you've added an extra mental element to your shot, and that's never good. They got the shot clock right, so it bought Stan Johnson an extra few seconds with his team to try to draw something up. Again, I said it a minute ago, they just, they can't have empty possessions at this point. Under three minutes to go, down 11. They can't trade baskets either. I mean, every time they have to do that, those are precious seconds that wind down. Anderson, long three. In and out. That one that goes to LMU. Yeah, Alea Pepe was fighting for position. It goes off of Ali Atiki. But Anderson shot that one with confidence, right? Like, I mean, as soon as that ball hit his hands, you knew it was going up. It was square. It gave himself a chance. And he's had a good year, Jalen Anderson. 0 for 7 tonight. He has not scored. Lea Pepe, quick three. Good! Three. LMU sets up the pressure. Williams gets fouled, and if they're going to call that against Shelton, that's number five. No, they're going to call that against Marble. Okay. Yeah, I will tell you, I, I think Rudy w Williams sold that one a little bit. I think he was anticipating the foul and kind of fell into it. Let's see. Watch this on the catch. As he jumps, he sees that he's coming. And he kind of puts out his elbow and initiates the contact as he's falling to the floor. No one gave him the flop single. <laughs> he's making his free throws, which is just huge down the stretch. He's a rare Canadian in this BYU program, native of Ontario, Canada. Started his college career at Kansas State, went to Coastal Carolina, was a good player there. But has really found a home at BYU. Made two more free throws. As he played well tonight. 21 points, 9 of 10 at the line. Shelton again against Ali Atiki. This time he got around the shot blocker. Robinson pinned baseline and a foul. Now, who's this on? They call this on Cam Shelton. They, they do, do, and he's gone. One of the top scorers in the country. 27 more points tonight for Cam Shelton, but he's done. Watch this. Ooh, that's pretty close to being a jump ball. Yeah. Yeah, hey, ball. You, you reach around like that's clear. You, you see the reach around, and the initial reaction is okay, well, he's reaching over the top there. That's going to be a foul. I don't think that was a foul. But, and a tough one to foul out on if you're Cam Shelton. So now Robinson at the free throw line. It's been double bonus for a long time. Essentially at this point, if BYU makes its free throws, it's they're, they're moving on to the semis. Oh, miss there. What a year for that guy. He's been he's a sensational season and what he's meant to this program. And his improvement from year to year, just massive. Speaks on his love of this game, his commitment to this team, his commitment and belief in his coach. I hope it's not LMU's final game, even if they lose this one. Anderson got fouled by Johnson. That's probably not what Mark Pope wanted. Two shots. 
Well, with Shelton on the bench, Anderson has to step up and assume a little bit more of those responsibilities as a playmaker with the ball in his hands, trying to score. You've got a couple of shooters around you on the outside in Aarons and Stevens, but you can't afford to miss your free throws at this point in time. He still has not scored tonight. Oh, for six. Finally, a point. That one almost didn't go in. Allows LMU to set up the pressure. Robinson gets it into Saunders. Playing keep away. Really complain. Williams, another tough shot, no good. Leia Pepe, LMU would like to get something real fast. Leia Pepe wanted to lay off there for the three. Anderson three, no. Johnson rebound. LMU, uh, you would think, has to foul. They're down eight with a minute 15. They have to. Wow. They're just blitzing everything. You're going to play out this possession. At this point in time, you don't foul. Yeah. Williams, a block foul against Leia Pepe. Well, that was ill advised by LMU because you let too much time run off the clock to end with the result of them being at the free throw line again. Right? I mean, and I think that you, you want to make this game as long as you possibly can, and the best way to do that in this situation was to foul. Now, the challenge becomes the rock. Now, if we show the student section here of the rock that's currently here, that's the size of the rock that's currently here. You and I have been to plenty of games in Provo, and the student section is amazing. How many are getting on a bus and coming on down here for Monday night? I hope a lot. Yeah. Now, this team has fought their way into the semifinals. And they're going to play St. Mary's. Now, St. Mary's is really good. They've had a great year. But BYU played them right to the end both times. Lea Pepe, he one up. No good. And I think LMU is just going to back off now. Under a minute to go. BYU will get ready for a matchup with the top seed. And BYU played really well here tonight. We have another game, remember, still to come. College basketball scoreboard is going to fill the time between games. So we'll send it back to the studio. Zubin. He's there. Dallin. He's there. And Jordan Cornette. I think he's there too. That is must-see television. I'm telling you right there. And then you and I will be back here for Santa Clara and San Francisco with another berth in the semifinals on the line. Shot clock is off. Rudy Williams is going to dribble it out. BYU's on to the semis. You know, Dallin Cuff is Mr. Las Vegas, so he's jealous right now. But that's okay. BYU, what a performance. Right from the start, the execution offensively was at an elite level. They're looking to make a statement. They're looking to do something that maybe a lot of people don't think they can do. They won this game without Foose really having a big impact, and he's had a lot of big impacts throughout the course of the year. That says a lot about the way this team is dialed in defensively. I'm excited for that matchup on, on Monday night. So BYU beats the four seed to advance to the semifinals. They will meet St. Mary's. And again, we've had a couple of really good St. Mary's BYU games in the regular season already. Gonzaga with the double bye, the co-regular season champions, the number two seed. They await the winner of.